Hello everyone and welcome to a really really wild game from the final round of the FIDE Chess Olympiad. We are going to show one more game uh, and then we are going to discuss the standings as we still haven't shown that. Uh, it is Gabriel Sargisian versus Alexei Shirov, uh, board one of Armenia and board one of Spain. Uh, both of them uh, almost, well, Sargisian almost 2700 before the start of the event and Alexei Shirov a 2700 member. Uh, it is, uh, it, it's well, it's a game you would expect to see when Alexei Shirov is playing uh, and and well, yeah, he's also another master of the mystic arts, uh, so it's no wonder that uh, such a game happens. The, the game is over extremely quickly, uh, so don't be surprised by that. Uh, so let's check it out. Sargisian has the white pieces and he opens with d4. And before we check out the game, uh, here is a very nice photo of the handshake. Uh, between the two of them, you can see that Shiro is very happy to uh, start playing. Um, still no eye contact, but uh, we, we we have yet to see eye contact between chess players before the start of the game. And I think the S on his shirt is really, really awesome. Uh, it's probably a logo from some company, but uh, it could also stand for, you know, uh, just Shirov. And uh, it's tilted 90 degrees, sort of. Uh, representing his extremely wild style of play. Uh, but it is it is most likely a logo of a company. Uh, but okay, uh, Sargisian opens with d4. We have d5 by Alexei, c4 and c6. Going for the Slav defense, knight f3, knight to f6 and queen to b3. Uh, very standard stuff, putting pressure on the center and on the b7 pawn, uh, preventing the light square bishop uh, from being developed. D captures on c4, black forces white to waste the tempo, queen captures and the bishop to g4 now. We have knight to c3 and now knight b to d7. Uh, and here uh, e4 is a very standard idea, but first we have bishop to f4, and now bishop captures on f3. We have g captures, and now white's pawn structure is a little bit messed up, but he will play e4 at some point, and he will have uh, a massive center here. So knight b6 attacks the queen, queen d3, and now knight f to d5. Again, all very, very standard, played many, many times. Knight captures, knight captures, and now as the bishop is attacked, bishop back to d2, preparing e4 to dislodge the knight from this mighty d five square. So e6 uh, and now pawn to e4. And here uh, there are some games where knight to f6 was played, also knight to b4 going after the queen is a known move. But here we have queen, uh, knight to c7 uh, by Shirov and it is now as of move 12 that we have a completely new game. So here Sargisian castles queen side and now queen to h4. Leave it up to Alexei to bring his queen into the game early. He attacks the f2 pawn and also the queen can be shifted to h5 to go after the f3 pawn as those are the two weaknesses in white's camp. So bishop e3 defends the pawn here, and now Shirov castles queen side. We have queen to d2, now preparing bishop to g5, and this is where the game really starts to uh, bring smiles to everyone's faces. Uh, Shirov plays g6, and it's a move that only Shirov would play. It's such a uh, it's such a brilliant move, uh, but the problem is it loses the game. But if it weren't for that uh, very particular line that wins for white, it's actually a really, really classy idea. Uh, first, you have to play queen to h5, go after the f3 pawn. The game just continues, and nothing special is happening here. However, after g, uh, g6, sort of daring uh, Sargisian to play bishop to g5, uh, the game is completely lost for Shirov, uh, but uh, now not for the reasons that you think, or maybe you think them, so th then you are also as strong as Sargisian. Uh, so bishop to g5 was played, attacking the queen and the rook, and now queen to h5. And here, what do you play? It's a very tricky position. Feel free to pause the video and play the move that uh, Shirov missed uh, and Sargisian found while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting this, uh, well, sort of a silent tricky move. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is bishop to e2. This is the move that wins the game. And while we are going to discuss why, I know you guys are wondering what happens if we just grab the rook. Uh, well, bishop to h6. And now white has some problems here. There, there aren't the great problems, but they are very annoying. You have to play f4 here. Now we captured the bishop here. And the white is of the exchange, but black has... Uh, 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 well, sufficient compensation here. It's definitely a position Shiro would happily play. So instead, after queen h5, bishop to e2 was played, and now uh, what do you play here? 
Problem is, your rook is still hanging. Let's say you try and save the rook, h4 comes. And now your queen cannot move, f4 will be played on the next move, and you will uh, you will have lost your queen. So another thing you could do after this bishop to e2 idea is play queen to h3. This is also possible, but now rook d to g1, preparing rook to g3, and after bishop to d6, guarding this square, we just play f4 and there is no good way of preventing uh, rook to g3. You can play f6, uh, hope to um, uh, you know, get the queen back into the game. If the bishop captures, maybe you can retreat via queen to h6, uh, but just rook to g3, and now, okay, you will get two pieces for uh, the queen, but it is uh, it is definitely not enough. Captures, captures, and white will be completely winning. So that's the problem after bishop to e2. So Shirov tries bishop to b4. He attacks the white queen, hopes for bishop uh, queen captures bishop so he can capture the bishop on g5 with check. But Gabriel just plays queen to e3. He's not interested in, in, in the bishop. He just wants to play uh, this and capture, the, or rather h4 and then f4, and trap the black queen. So here... Uh, uh, e5. Again, e if you move the rook, you know wh what is coming. So here, uh, Shirov uh, shows why he is such a uh, such a great player. He plays e5. And this uh, directly stops f4, because if you play f4 now, now e captures on f4, also attacks the white queen. Uh, white will still be much better here, most likely even winning, but uh, of course, Shiro will get some counter chances. So instead, after e5, we have bishop captures on d8. Sargisian says, all right, I, I will take the material. Rook captures on d8, and now just d captures on e5, uh, leaving black without, um, uh, well, w without any compensation whatsoever. So queen captures on e5, rook captures on d8 trading off now material because if you are up in material you want to trade down rook to d1 with check king to e7 and now pawn to f4 uh, we have queen to c5 with check shiro now tries uh, a queen trade because he might survive the end game but it is uh well it is it, it would be silly to expect to survive uh, such an end game so here king to b1 uh, b a queen captures on e3 f captures and now knight to e8 and of course the game is completely winning now now it's only a matter of how sargisian will convert to this so here pawn to e5 Bishop to c5 goes after the pawn, and now bishop to g4, trying to get that rook to d7 check in. So pawn to f5, and now e captures on f6 with check. A passant, uh, knight captures, and bishop back to f3. Uh, of course, th this cannot be captured because rook to e1 is just very, very annoying. Uh, so instead, we have h6 and now pawn to h4. We have king to e6, now comes king to c2 and pawn to h5. Uh, Shirov trying his best to, uh, to keep everything at bay, but uh, I mean, it, it, it is simply unplayable. The bishop to e7, we have rook to g1 going after the pawn here, king f7 and king to e2 now. We have knight to d7, bishop to e4 and now knight to f8 we have rook to h1 and now knight back to d7 he has to wait and see uh, how sargisian will push this so bishop to c2 we have bishop to f6 going for the pawn here and now pawn to e4 saying that if you capture here i'm just gonna play rook to b1 and then your queen side falls apart as well so here bishop to d4 now comes pawn to e5 uh really limiting the movements of this uh, of this bishop uh knight to f8 and now king to d3 we have a pawn to c5 defending the bishop, king to e4, b6 now, and pawn to b4. Of course, uh, this is impossible. Uh, the bishop would hang. So king to e7, and now bishop to b3, uh, taking uh, all of these squares away from the black king. Bishop to f2, putting pressure on the h4 pawn if the rook ever moves, but you don't have to uh, worry about that. Pawn to b5, uh, knight to d7, and now bishop to c4. Just putting pieces on optimal squares before you uh, go for that final piece of infiltration. Knight to f8, we have rook to h3, and now bishop to e1, uh, and finally pawn to f5. Uh, G captures, king captures, knight to d7, and now rook to a3, and he was in this position on move 49 that Alexei Shiro resigned the game, as there is nothing more to be done here. Uh, rook captures on a7 is coming, and that's it. A game might continue with something like bishop captures on h4, uh, but then just rook captures on a7, now you're threatening e6 to pick up the knight, and if you move the king, now you just play king to e6, and there are no moves here. 
uh, well, whatever you play, doesn't really matter. Uh, if you go here, then we just attack the knight, you lose the knight. If you go knight to f8 with check, we just play king to d6, we push the pawn, win the game. Uh, absolutely everything is winning here. So really tough break uh, for, for Shirov. Uh, he really tried to play aggressive, he tried to play uh, creatively, he tried to play in his style, uh, but after this... Um, uh, queen to h5 move. Uh, he, he thought bishop captures on d8 was coming, but he completely overlooked bishop to e2. Sargisian found it, and hopefully uh, some of you found it as well. Now, uh, here is uh, something that I wanted to show you uh, before we uh, before we end the video. Uh, this is a congratulations from Levon Arunyan. As you know, he is now playing for the United States. He is no longer playing for Armenia. He says, incredible performances by, the, by young uh, Uzbekistan, India too, but for me especially Armenia, uh, winning silver and coming so close to gold is incredible and makes me very proud i hope such a sensational performance will get a deserved recognition and uh, i thought that uh, for some reason levon skipped um uh, their their brawl with uh, Armenia when the United States was playing against Armenia, but Levon later uh, explained that he caught some allergies and that uh, he was unable to play uh, for for the last few days and that he is still recovering. In in case some of you were wondering about that, and also here are the final standings of the Olympiad uh, or rather of the Open Olympiad, as there is also the women's section. Uh, uh, team Uzbekistan wins the event uh, tied with Armenia as you can see both of them with 19 match points but um, uh, Uzbekistan has uh, more board points as, as uh, players uh, individually performed better than Armenians uh, with 33 uh, board points I don't know if it's actually board point I always thought it was board points maybe it's something else but yeah 33 board points uh, versus 28 and a half board points then we have in third place with 18 points India too the youngsters uh, grabbed um, uh, the, the bronze medal in the Olympiad. Uh, the main team of India uh, grabs fourth place, which is incredible. Of course, you th that is, I mean, an incredible result, but you are that close to getting the medal. So, I mean, it's uh, uh, n not w what they wanted, especially since it was organized in India, I imagine. It um, uh, would mean a whole lot to them if, if they uh, won the medal, but at least uh, one of their their teams won it. Uh, Moldova, also incredible result, uh, also 17 points. United States of America, the top seed, uh, everyone expected uh, them to, to fight for first place, and they did fight, uh, but uh, in the end, only sixth place. Then with 16 points, Hungary and Azerbaijan, uh, also Poland and Lithuania. With 15 points, we have uh, Netherlands, Spain, Montenegro, Greece, England, France, uh, Israel, Kazakhstan, Brazil, and Cuba. Uh, so those are uh, the, the, the top 20 uh, countries in the uh, FIDE Chess Olympiad 2022. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. A little bit of photos, a little bit of uh, final standings. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, it's, it always brings a smile to my face when we see uh, <laughs> a game by Alexei Shiro because you never know what to expect. Uh, and here, uh, I mean, no one knew what to expect. Sargisian didn't know what to expect. And in the end, Shiro didn't know what to expect out of that uh, uh, a brilliant move that loses the game. Uh, so yeah, uh, once again, really hope you guys enjoyed this. If you have any favorite games uh, from the Women's Olympiad, do use hashtag suggestion and I will go over them as we will show uh, a couple of games. So uh, make sure uh, you, you choose well. Uh, I would like to thank Michael Kalber, uh, Sunil Chandrakant, Ma Ma Madrukar, uh, Chess Connects Us, uh, Keith Hink, and Kathleen Althea Cashman for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon continuing uh, the coverage of the Olympiad as, like I said, we are going to check out a few more games. So thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.